Hey everybody, it's Ben, and right here is my teardrop camping trailer, which I built going on 15 years ago now. Uh, I want to give you a little tour and also let you know what I would or wouldn't do differently knowing what I know now. And yes, I do tow that with that, and I power it all with that. So if you've never heard of a teardrop before, um, it's named that because of its shape. Um, it's sort of shaped like a teardrop. It's rounded in front and it slopes down and back. Uh, some of them are kind of longer and slopier than mine. Uh, mine is this size and shape uh, for a specific reason. We'll get into that in a little bit. Um, there's two doors and you just sleep inside. It's just a bed and then in the back under this hatch is a galley, just a very simple kitchen. Now one thing you'll probably notice is the wood veneer um, has really peeled off. That's one thing I would definitely do different um, if I was doing one of these again. The aluminum is in perfect condition. I would definitely do that again. Uh, one thing that's a little bit different about the aluminum that's on here is I actually went to a place that repairs semi-truck trailers. And so this is a really nice, thick, heavy aluminum. This stuff's indestructible, especially with the curve. I mean, you can stand up on top of here. The overall construction, is half inch plywood on the outside, uh, inch and a half foam, and a eighth inch interior veneer. This is all built on a Harbor Freight uh, tool trailer frame. It's a uh, you know inexpensive frame. One thing I don't like about it was it never had that nice uh, center jack, so I had to get one of these flip up ones, but I don't like those because those are off center. Uh, most of the things that I did on here were either uh, aluminum or stainless steel. So if we look at the deck screws here, those are all stainless. This decking here, uh, that's Ipe or ironwood. And that was actually leftover decking from my back porch. And under here, we've got a battery. It's just strapped down to the decking that provides 12 volt power. Um, that's good for more than a weekend. So I don't even have any solar on this. I just charge it before I leave. and. Uh, it's good. Primarily, it powers lights. So on the outside of the trailer, uh, we've got dome lights, uh, one on either side, one inside, and one under the hatch. And there's also a powered roof vent, uh, which is fantastic. Literally a fantastic vent. They are wonderful. I highly recommend having one of those. And that runs on the 12 volt. So what I did was, I had seen woody teardrops, which I thought looked kind of cool. So I did the aluminum on the roof, but I did a wood veneer on the side. So this was a oak veneer, just an eighth of an inch thick, and then covered in spar varnish. But you really, really have to keep up with the spar varnish, make sure you get it all. Um, and oak is just kind of absorbent too. So unfortunately, the weather really took a beating on this, but it's, it's all the veneer. The actual plywood itself is still good. Uh, the door hinges are stainless steel. The trim is aluminum. I bent that all myself. The doors are also insulated. The window here, I got uh, a pair of these from a uh, conversion van place where I just went there and said, hey, do you have any portholes like they had in 70s vans? That's kind of what I was looking for. Uh, no, they didn't have that, but they had some nice little sliding windows here. I also have the little bumper that goes onto the hook here so that when you open the door, it stays open. Uh, that's also stainless steel and it's a good place to hang a hat. And if I just open this, you can see how that keeps the door open for you right there. The window itself um, also slides open and closed and there's a screen in there as well. Aluminum trim inside the door frame. Let's open the other door to get some more light through. So if you ask me what really makes a teardrop is the interior. Uh, because it's curved, you get this beautiful curved roof line. Um, I just did this with some nice high quality uh, eighth inch plywood paneling. I don't remember if this is maple or birch or, or what, but um, it's just clear coated. So it's got that nice light color. It feels very spacious because of the curve. Um, I've got doors on both sides. This does sleep too, but if you only had one door, you'd have to climb over the other person in the middle of the night to go out, use the bathroom. Nobody wants to do that. Um, we have a dome light in the middle here. And right up above in the middle, we have our ceiling vent. 
the ceiling vent here really is fantastic. Um, I did a low profile crank on it instead of like one of those big ones that stick out so I couldn't hit my head on it. It has clear uh, fan blades, but the dome itself is actually tinted. And the reason I did that is it means when it's closed, um, it's kind of shady, it keeps the heat out. But when it's open, um, I really have a good view through there. It's basically a 12 inch fan. I think these are uh, 14 inch rough opening. It does in and out so it can blow or suck and it's got three speeds and its own fuse. And in fact, once those blades are spinning, uh, you can't see them at all. So down here, you actually have a good view of the stars at night, believe it or not. Uh, the other thing too is if we set that to exhaust and close one of the doors, but um, slide open the window, it draws the air in and out and it works really nice for cooling you down at night. Um, inside here, we just have one basic little shelf. Uh, just throw your clothes up there, that sort of thing. Nothing too crazy. And there's kind of a shelf here and your feet extend out into it. So it's six feet long in the bed, even though it's only an eight foot long trailer. And we'll see what this uh, shelf here does when we take a look under the hatch. Now, part of the rest of the magic of being in the cabin here, uh, for starters, I did design this height so that it's nice for sitting. Um, so going from here to the ground is uh, nice. I can put my feet down. Uh, the mattress is a memory foam mattress. And if we lift it up, I've actually got a kind of like a plastic double sink almost. And that holds the spare tire right there. So you've got your spare tire, but it's not getting rusty. It's not wet and everything like that. Uh, there's another cargo compartment on the other side. We'll show you that. So this cargo compartment has more just the stuff you want to have with you. Uh, we got a little step stool, a jack, emergency supplies, wrench, stuff like that. Stuff you need to change your tire or anything along those lines. This trailer has 12 inch rims and tires. Um, that's what came with it originally, but this is a five bolt pattern. This originally uh, with the Harbor Freight axle it had four bolt tires, but weird size bearings. They were like 0.98 inches or something like that. I had trouble with them. They locked up on the road on me once. So I pulled off the entire axle and I replaced the axle with one from Tractor Supply. So it was the, the axle, the hubs, the wheels, the whole nine yard. So that was a 2000 pound axle and uh, five bolt uh, rims. Uh, also this entire trailer weighs about 800 pounds. I do like the square um, fenders here because it gives me a place to set a drink. Uh, just the plain trailer lights are nothing special at all. If I did one of these again, I think I'd put a little work into putting some nice trailer lights on them. On the back of the camper, uh, the aluminum, which I got from the semi-truck repair place, it's seamless all the way down to the hinge. This is called a hurricane hinge. It's sort of a special design uh, in how uh, the two parts overlap each other. And then, uh, let's see, well, over here, you'll notice this strip, which doesn't match on this side. That's because I, I screwed up when I was cutting. <laughs> I had to add another piece on there. So, you know, the old uh, measure twice, cut once trick. But let's uh, open this up, take a look. So one of the biggest things to start with, just that I designed it where I could walk underneath it and not hit my head. Uh, that was definitely a uh, important design consideration is not to smack your noggin here. Um, we do have, again, of course, another dome light. This is great for cooking at night. Uh, simple dome light, you can see everything. Uh, electricity in here is pretty simple. I originally had like a little panel back in this corner, like from a boat, but it was kind of junk and fell apart on me. <laughs> and. Uh, I kind of need to clean up that wiring, but it, it works. It's functional. I got the right size wiring in there and everything. Uh, up here, I have a magnet from a computer hard drive. So if I'm cooking and I got my big chef's knife, I just stick it up there. Uh, the top shelf is really just designed for my camp stove. Maybe I should put that in there. Okay, here just to show you is my Coleman camp stove. Uh, these normally run on those little disposable size bottles of propane, which seems wasteful and expensive. Um, so what I did is I've got the connector that goes into the side and I just got a hose and a little teeny tiny propane tank that lives down here. So I can just hook the hose up to that. 
I've got a, hill, a hole drilled through the counter right here, special for that, so I can have my stove and my little propane tank all together. Underneath, we've got our water jug. Go fill that up, put that right back here. Just gravity powered, very simple. And then over here, uh, we've got our cooler. So refrigeration, cooking, and water, all very nice and simple. Uh, the plans that I was originally using called for building out some cabinets, which just seemed like a lot of work, but also you'd have less flexibility as well. Um, I really liked the flexibility that I had here. What I should have done though is I never really finished off the galley. Um, what I should have done is the aluminum on top uh, I was originally planning to put in on the sides here as well. Um, I also did some pretty temporary props for holding the roof up here and I never upgraded those. You know I was always thinking I would use something like um, some shocks from a hatchback car, for example. Um, I've also seen people use these springs that are really cool. They, they bend, and then when you open up the hatch, they straighten, and they're actually really sturdy. It's a, it's a cool way to do it. Uh, the other thing is waterproofing the hatch is very, very tricky. You really have to pay uh, good attention uh, to the details to make sure the hatch seals up. Otherwise, you can get a little tiny bit of water through, and of course, over time, that doesn't do you any good. For the counter here, I just used melamine because it's simple, strong, it's, it's easy to wipe off. Again, I think maybe aluminum, like what I used on the exterior, could have looked really nice here. Uh, down in the bottom, I just used some linoleum. Also has a latch, you know, so I can lock it up if I want. Maybe right on the door is a good spot to kind of show um, how thick the walls are. Um, half inch plywood on the outside then covered by just that veneer of oak um, and then inch and a half foam and then a eighth inch wood interior panel so when you're all done your walls about this thick but the other thing is it's insulated uh, same with the roof insulated the warm uh, the roof is insulated nice and warm I didn't insulate the floor um, that's one thing I would definitely do differently uh, sometimes if your body really digs through the foam uh, the bottom feels a little cold. Building your own teardrop trailer is a very, very cool project. Um, it's a great uh, summer project. It, it takes a little bit of carpentry skills and things like that. But what was, for me, really unique about this project was it was, uh, it was my first real do-it-yourself project. Um, I had never done anything like this before. I got a set of plans off of the internet for 30 bucks, printed it out, uh, followed the directions pretty close. Uh, when I started and got a little bit more loose with those as I went uh, So really step by step when I started and it was a 4 by 8 frame um, One of the things I would definitely do different if I did one of these again would be uh, I'd use a 5 by 8 trailer Maybe even a 5 by 10 trailer. I think the proportions on this are not quite right It looks a little tall compared to how wide it is and it would definitely be nice to have a little bit more width for sleeping, but that would give you a little bit more uh, width in the kitchen as well. Um, I love the aluminum material that I used on this. I love the fantastic van, the fantastic fan vent. Um, I really love the interior here with the nice, clean, swooping ceiling in the sleeping area. Um, there's not too many things I would do different. Uh, the siding, uh, I definitely would not go with the oak veneer. That did not work out well for me. Um, I would probably do uh, some sort of metal. It could be just flat sheet aluminum, uh, like what we have on top. I've even seen people do like corrugated galvanized and had it look pretty cool as kind of a, a rat rod teardrop sort of a thing. Uh, there's a lot of different ways you can go with a teardrop trailer. And that's the fun really, is the personalization. Um, other minor things, uh, the lights, they'd all be LED now. I mean, uh, the dome lights were all just little off the shelf parts that I bought back then. LED was too expensive at the time. Uh, I would also probably do something a little bit nicer with the, uh, the fenders and the taillights, uh, more for style than anything else. The one last thing I'd like to say about the camper is just how extremely towable it is. Uh, it's only four foot wide. I mean, your typical car is you know five foot wide or more, so you literally don't even see this in the side view mirrors. 
Uh, the other thing too is it's relatively short, so you can put it right in any garage. You don't have to worry about height being an issue. Uh, but this only weighs 800 pounds. So you can tow this with a Prius, with a Chevy Volt, Chevy Bolt, with a Tesla. Um, I tow it pretty regularly with a Mitsubishi iMeve, which is a, a compact car, but uh, any of the electrics tow really, really well. And if I'm going to a campground with electricity anyways, um, I can tow my trailer and recharge my electric car while I'm there. So that's it for this project, but make sure to check out 300mpg.org for more cool, clean transportation projects. And until next time, stay charged up.